this is Candy from eyes2jesus.blogspot.com and today I wanted to discuss a very important topic that being should or is it okay I should say rather is it okay for Christians to celebrate or partake in Halloween and we are going to go to the Word of God I just have uh, several scriptures I have printed on, on a piece of paper here so that I'm not spending a long time flipping pages and uh, we're going to turn to the Word of God. But before we do, I think we need to look a little bit more at what Halloween is. How is Halloween, at least in American culture, modern American culture, celebrated? Generally, it's celebrated by uh, people, I would say children, but a lot of adults partake in this now too, dressing up in costumes and going door to door, trick or treating. Uh, a lot of times the more Christian ones will uh, trunk or treat uh, at churches. Um, public schools will have uh, Halloween carnivals. Um, a lot of churches will have Halloween carnivals as well. So does that answer our question right there? Is it okay to celebrate Halloween? Because obviously churches do. Do all churches? No. But the majority of them seem to. Does that make it okay to celebrate Halloween? Well, let's look at what type of costumes do people wear? Sure, there's some cutesy costumes like uh, dressing up like a princess or a police officer. But, I mean, you look at a lot of these costumes and a lot of them are masks of uh, movie serial killers, of... Um, zombies, vampires, witches, you can even dress up as a dragon. Um, a lot of these costumes are actually costumes that portray an image of evil. And then look at how places decorate for Halloween. Uh, my husband and I on uh, our weekly date decided to uh, check out a restaurant we haven't checked out before. And the restaurant had great food. We walked into the restaurant and they had fake spider webs, they had skeletons, they had fake spiders all over all of their walls. So those would be also classified as more of an evil decoration. So Halloween, in essence, seems to be a celebration of death and evil, and that actually is what it is. Um, Halloween is considered the devil's birthday by many people. It is a high satanic holiday. There are human sacrifices done specifically on Halloween in celebration by Satanists and dark groups of the high satanic holiday. According to testimonies of many people who came out of Satanism, their most valued sacrifice is a female Christian virgin. So Halloween is a day of evil. And what is the history of Halloween? Well, uh, it used to be uh, known as the pagan Roman feast Pomona. And Pomona was in celebration of their false goddess of fruit and seeds. Can you guess what that goddess's name in the Bible is? This false goddess's name in the Bible is Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth or Queen of Heaven. So if you look up Queen of Heaven, Ashtoreth, and Ashtoreth, you're going to see the pagan Roman um, goddess. And uh, this goddess uh, was known under different names in different cultures. You'll also see her named as Diana, which is mentioned once in the New Testament. You'll see her as mentioned as um, Isis, Ishtar, which is pronounced Easter, which is not a coincidence. Easter is another name for Ashtoreth, but that's a whole another topic and a whole another video. So here is just uh, one of the places <clears throat> where it talks about Ashtoreth in the Bible. So if you look in your King James Bible at Judges chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, it says, And they forsake the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Judges 2, 12 through 13. Now, we see many instances of this of uh, the Israelites following the gods of the heathen or pagans around them instead of being, staying true to, to the one true God. Did they fully forsake the one true God? In some situations it looked like that or close to that, but in many situations they didn't. They worshipped the one true God, but they added some aspects of these other gods of the land in which they dwelt that they liked. They took aspects and pieces from different religions or from false gods that they liked and added it. They took on 
the religious culture of the people around them. That would include taking on pagan celebrations like Pomona in its earlier form. All right, and Halloween was also a pagan holiday called Parentalia, which was known as the Day of the Dead. And that is still what it is today. Halloween is the Day of the Dead. And then Parentalia then points us to Samhain. Now Samhain is spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it's pronounced Samhain. And that was a Celtic pagan holiday. Samhain was seen as a time when the spirits of the dead would walk the earth. The ghosts of beloved dead ones were welcomed into homes for great feasts. And then, of course, if you read further on the humble beginnings of Halloween, you find out that uh, people would start carving out jack-o'-lanterns and putting them on their porches to scare away the ghosts that they didn't want a visit from. So some Roman Catholic churches celebrate their All Saints Day, in which children dress up as their patron or favorite saints. Most, family, most families celebrate Halloween by having their children don costumes and go door to door, trick or treating, asking for candy, etc. But today's modern Halloween, or as I like to call it, Halloween, is a Hello Day that is a throwback from its holiday predecessor. Whether you want to call it Pomona, Parentalia, Samhain, Satan's birthday, the Satanic High Holy Day that is still fully celebrated today around the world on October 31st. It is all of a root of evil. I mean, take a look walking through city streets. You see skeletons hanging from the light post. Go into a lot of stores. You see skeletons and pictures of monsters and demons and spiders wherever you go. I mean, eat in a restaurant. A lot of restaurants literally have little skeletons hanging from their light fixtures. Oh joy, let's eat a burger while a little dead person is hanging in front of my face. Obviously these skeletons aren't real, but they're made to look real. And uh, th does this please the Lord? Does this matter uh, to the Lord? Well, let's take a look at 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 4 through 6. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, Solomon the most wise man in the world, when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. 1 Kings 11, verses 4 through 6. So, so it didn't say Solomon forsook the Lord. It said he didn't go fully after the Lord. His heart was no longer perfect for the Lord as David's heart was. So he added to his worship. He kept worshiping the Lord, but he started adding on pagan holidays, traditions, and customs of some of these other false gods, such as of Ashtoreth and Milcom. Milcom, by the way, it's the same as Moloch or Molech, which is the same as Baal or Bel, which is the false savior that was born on December 25th. Jesus was born on September 29th, 3 BC. And I got that from the scriptures, and I do have a video on that. If you take a look in my Bible study playlist that uh, is titled something like, uh, When Was Jesus Born? All right, but uh, notice it says that so that Solomon's heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. What does the Bible say in both Old and New Testament? It instructs the people of God, be ye perfect. It says here that David's heart was perfect with God. David committed adultery and David committed murder. But God considered David's heart perfect? Why? Well, David repented of the adultery and of the murder and paid dearly for it. But... David never wavered into going after other gods. That is spiritual adultery. You are cheating on God when you are following traditions and religious customs, I should say, of the false gods. And that's what Halloween is, or Halloween. It is traditions and customs that are religious in honor of a false god. 
and that is a no-no. All right, uh, and yet notice uh, if we were to continue reading on in chapter 11, it says at verse 9 what God thought of Solomon's antics. It says in verse 9 that the Lord was angry with Solomon. All right, so let's look at another scripture. Uh, Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will choose the Lord. We are supposed to choose. Are you going to choose ancient, ancestral, pagan gods? Are you going to choose the God of this world, which is the God behind Halloween? Or are you going to choose to follow the Lord? It doesn't say you can do them both. It's okay. It's what's in your heart that matters. No, it says to choose. Joshua 24, 15. Which do you choose? All right. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2 through 3a says, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. Learn not the way of the heathen, the customs of the people are vain. So, what are one of the ways of the heathen? Satan's birthday, satanic high days, celebration of death and evil and demons, October 31st. That would be learning the way of the heathen and following the customs of the people for a Christian to partake in that. That is the Christian partaking in a religious function after the false gods of the culture in which they live. And in case this still isn't clear, let's look in the New Testament. I don't think it gets any clearer than this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. This small, simple sentence says it all. It says, abstain from all appearance of evil. So, obviously, that rules out dressing up as demons and yucky stuff, right? But it's an appearance of evil for a Christian to even partake in Halloween in any way, shape, or form. If you're going to Christianize Satan's birthday by going to Trunko Treat or Halloween Carnival at your church, maybe they change the name to Harvest Carnival, and it just happens to... Uh, be celebrated like a watered-down version of Halloween. Don't partake. That is an appearance of evil. Christian Satanists are laughing at you if you are partaking in this most evil day of the year. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Don't have anything to do with it. Don't even have the appearance of supporting it. All right, let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 9. This is interesting. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. All right, dissimulation. Do you know what dissimulation means? I just thought this was an interesting. Dissimulation means to disguise or conceal under a false appearance. That is just so Halloween. Let love be without dissimulation. So don't have a false love. Don't be a false Christian. Don't be a wolf in sheep's clothing. All right. And then abhor that which is evil. Halloween as a Christian should totally disgust you and you should have nothing to do with it. All right. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Halloween is a tradition of man whoring after false gods, partaking in Halloween in any way, shape, or form, no matter how innocent, cutesy, or Christian you make it. No matter if you think you've baptized it in Christ, you are opening doors to demons. That is a demonic, satanic high day, and Christians are not supposed to have any part of that in any way, shape, or form. All right, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not... Oh, hold on, excuse me, let's go to James 4, 4 first. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you partake in Halloween because 
That's what everybody does. That's what's always been done. You think it's good, harmless, fun. That is friendship with the world. You are putting yourself at enmity with God himself. You are a child of God. Act like it and honor the Lord and don't commit spiritual adultery. All right, now 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 20 says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So, maybe you celebrated Halloween before you were a Christian, or maybe you're a Christian and you celebrated it because you didn't know any better. But it's talking about once you're a Christian, you're supposed to put away these things of the world, and now you know that Halloween is anathema. No, we're not supposed to partake of it. So, a Christian knowingly partaking in Halloween, it says here that the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. They will be judged more harsher than before because now they know. And don't think you can stick your head in the sand and be an ostrich and try not to get more knowledge to learn about this stuff because God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We're supposed to learn this stuff. We're supposed to know this stuff. And when we do know this stuff, we are held to a higher standard and will receive worse judgment if we break this. All right, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begin first at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? We as the church, the body of Christ, will receive judgment if we partake in Halloween and these religious pagan festivals and holidays. Because... That is committing spiritual adultery. That shows our heart is not perfect with the Lord, and we are called to be perfect. So we need to cut it out, and we need to get serious. All right, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And Christians are not supposed to be of the world. Halloween is almost about as of the world as it gets, and we're not supposed to partake. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16 says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Salt that has no flavor and has lost its saltiness is useless. A light that has a bowl put over it so that its, its, its illuminating effect cannot be seen is useless. Christians are called to be different, and we are different, and we're supposed to be different. Why? Because we are not of this world. Therefore, we are not supposed to fit into this world. So be salty. Let your light shine. And during the Halloween season, that means don't partake. October 31st, do some extra prayer. But other than that, it's just a normal day. And turn off your porch light at night. You don't need to be encouraging trick-or-treaters. If you want to hand out gospel tracts, do that all the other nights of the year. But October 31st, don't have an appearance of evil. Don't participate in any way, shape, or form. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 through 21. If none of these other scriptures have convinced you, this scripture will. And if this scripture doesn't, then you're hard-headed because this is straight out. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 through 21, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, 
they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. What? And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. So you shouldn't even be taking communion if you're partaking in Halloween because Halloween is a form of a communion with devils. Behind every pagan holiday, behind every false god is a demon. And in the King James Bible, they call them devils. And it says here, too, that the, what they sacrificed to idols, they were sacrificing to devils. Because there are devils or demons behind those idols. And there are devils or demons behind Halloween. When you partake in Halloween, even if you want to say, well, I don't, I'm not worshipping those devils, though. I'm worshipping God. You are still bringing glory to those devils because there are actual demons behind every aspect of Halloween. When churches are doing their trunk or treat or their Halloween festivals or whatever fancy names they want to give them, their fall festivals, which ends up being a glorification of Halloween anyways, those church buildings are inviting demons into their threshold. Oh no, that's holy ground. They can't go there, balderdash. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another scripture. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 16 through 17 says, They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations. They provoked him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. And that is just another scripture showing that behind idols and false gods are actual devils, demons. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit, this is the Holy Spirit, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. Are you being seduced by these evil spirits and by these doctrines of devils that you think that you can baptize an evil holiday and turn it Christian? That you think you can take a day that was always meant for evil and turn it around and Christianize it? You can't do that. There are actual devils behind it. You think the devils are going to go, oh no, we better leave this holiday because the Christians are celebrating it. No, they love it. They want those Christians. Come on in, Christians. Yeah, partake of this harmless Halloween. We won't hurt you. Are you dealing with sickness, struggle, depression, judgment? Maybe this is why. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. How many fables are taught in churches today? They want to justify Christians being part of the world and justify Christians joining the world. These churches are seeker-friendly, seeker-sensitive. They want to bring the world into the church instead of bringing the church out into the world. It's a sad, sad situation. James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth, to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you didn't know before, Christian, that celebrating Halloween is a sin, now you do know. And guess what? God is going to hold you to that. If you go off skippy-dippy and celebrate Halloween, knowing what you know now, it will now be imputed unto you as sin, and judgment is around the corner. Repent while you still have breath in you. Repent before you receive judgment. John chapter 15 verse 19 says, If we, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. If the world loves you, Christian, you're of the world. If you're of the world, doesn't that mean you're not of Christ? The world hated Jesus, and the world hates Christians, because the world is currently under Satan's kingdom. This world is under the powers of principality, of darkness, all right? You can read about that in the book of Ephesians pretty clearly. And since we're in this fallen kingdom where Satan is currently the king, but here we are 
as ambassadors from Christ on Satan's turf, of course the world's going to hate us. But our job is to be light. Evil hides in the darkness. We shine the light and that's supposed to reveal the evil. People see our light and it should reveal their sins to themselves. They should see that they are fallen sinners and that they want to be in the light as you are in the light. Lead them to Christ and tell them the gospel. That is our job. All right. So, in wrapping this up, just a quick question. A lot of people are going to have the issue, what about family? If I stop celebrating Halloween, aren't the children going to be upset? What about my parents? The grandparents like to take their children out, etc. What about family? Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 says, what about family? It says, he that loveth father or mother more than me, this is Jesus speaking, is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. It's a matter of this. Who do you love more? Your family or Christ? Choose you this day who you will serve. The false gods of the culture via celebrating Halloween and the other pagan religious festivals? Or will you choose God? Ye cannot be partakers of the table of God and of the table of devils. Choose carefully, because your eternity may very well depend on it. Have a blessed day.